So as my friend and colleague uh, Chris Bianco likes to say, life's too short and so am I. And I obviously relate. So in the interest of time, let's get started. My name is Pablo Milic and I own a little restaurant in Old Town Scottsdale. I'm here tonight to talk to you about Arizona wine. Uh, to those of us in the restaurant business, uh, food and wine go together. If you talk to my chef and partner Charlene, she'll tell you that you should source food locally, organically and sustainably whenever possible. When we first opened up the restaurant, we had a very small wine list. In fact, we didn't carry any uh, Arizona wine until we posed the question, well, why not source uh, Arizona wine? So it was about maybe 10 years ago that I had my first Arizona wine, and it was one of Ken Calgan's red blends. And I remember thinking, man, this is really good wine. Uh, but I moved to Napa, and I sort of forgot all about Arizona wine. That is, until I came back about three years ago, and Arizona wine came back into my life on a well. And for those of you that don't know Sam Pillsbury, he's not only a local winemaker, he's also a film director. Um, so I started uh, doing a little research and development uh, after I had tasted his wines, and uh, I discovered there was a lot of wonderful Arizona wines. Uh, so then after that, that led me to actually kind of conduct another experiment at the restaurant where I would bring a glass of wine to a guest and tell them, listen, I'm going to give you a, gl a glass of wine. If you can guess either the varietal or the origin, I'll buy you something. Well, thank God I didn't have to buy anything because no one believed it was Arizona wine. <laughs> Furthermore, they really liked the wine. So thus was born the Arizona wine list. Now, how did the whole thing get started? In 1976, a hydrochemistry professor by the name of Gordon Dutt conducted what they called the Four Corners Development Project, which was funded by Congress to study the, uh, the, the viability of actually growing quality grapes in the four states. Um, and what they found is that they've planted vines in four different states, in uh, Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, and Colorado, and Sonoita was the one that uh, bought the best. So today we have uh, three major wine growing regions. Uh, to the north, we have uh, the Verde Valley. To the south, we have both um, Sonoita and Wilcox, and what makes it all possible is altitude. So when it's, night, when it's about 115 degrees here, it's about 90 degrees there. And the monsoons actually sweep in the afternoons and make the evenings even colder. We're talking about 60 to 70 degrees. So uh, a comment that I get often is, well, isn't it too dry and too hot in Arizona to make wine? And the funny thing is that the challenges about Arizona wine is too much water and the propensity for frost. It actually, uh, a monsoon hell decimated vineyards in Elgin last year. Uh, so anyways, this whole thing led me to the fact that I did have an Arizona wine list and people were not digging the wine, so it led me to the Arizona Judgment of 2010, which I wanted to pair wines against, Arizona wines against non-Arizona wines in an effort to bring awareness and recognition. And uh, to do that, we, um, we invited uh, noted experts like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk from uh, Wine Library TV, uh, also in attendance, uh, Master Somalia, Laura Williamson. We also had a winemaker from California, Tadeo Borchardt, uh, to actually help us uh, with the scoring. To keep it impartial and as official as possible, I worked together with Somalia Journal to, uh, to assess the scores, and guess what? The top place for the Arizona Y was the 2008 Ken Callaghan Lisa's Blend. The number one place was the 2008 uh, Caduceus Cabernet Sauvignon in the red wine. I mean, we were all very impressed, and all really I wanted to accomplish was to ensue a paradigm shift or a different way to think about Arizona wine. You know, to me, wine is about um, an intellectual and emotional connection uh, to a moment in time. It's about the conviviality of popping a cork with a friend or a loved one. Um, I know all these winemakers and I share their passion. And I guess I'm gonna point out the obvious, but why not drink locally? You're creating jobs, you're keeping the money in the state, you're actually minimizing your carbon footprint, therefore um, uh, helping the environment. Uh, what you're seeing there is during the Arizona Judgment of 2010, we're all swirling and sniffing wine like a bunch of nerds. And Chris Bianco says, oh my God, this is Arizona wine. So we all stopped and a journalist in attendance said, well, how do you know? And he said, because I can taste the struggle. <laughs> if, you, if you have not been to Arizona wine, you guys, um, do yourself a favor. It's only like two hours away from here. The people are so happy to see you. The landscapes are beautiful. I will assure you, you will find at least one wine you're gonna love. And uh, I guess what I have to say on behalf, uh, on behalf of Arizona wine industry, the people who grow the grapes, the people who make the wine, the, those wonderful people in the tasting rooms, the delivery drivers, is at least go try it. And I'm a huge fan of always saying, don't let anybody else tell you what's good. You should go out there because intelligent people like to formulate their own opinions. So having said that, where's the girl with the beer? <laughs> I need one. <laughs> Thank you.